Welcome back to Mad Props. This is, I think, episode 67 now. I don't know. We're somewhere somewhere in the 60s, but I'm your host, Chris Schnabel. It's great to have you back. Um, before we get started, make sure you follow us on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter, or follow us at Schnabel Studios on any social media you may get. That is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Schnabel Studios on YouTube. That's where you can watch all these. Um, although if you're watching right now, you're probably very confused. We'll get to that in a second. But um, you can also listen anywhere you get your podcast. Or go to snobstudios.com slash madpropspod to listen to any episode, anytime, anywhere you would like to. We have all that available for you. So before I start, if you're watching this podcast, you're probably like, what is going on? This is an unusual background. I'm actually at my office desk right now, which is a mess in the background. You see the Peloton. You see uh, you see the... the uh, there's a Spider-Man pillow right behind my shoulder. Um, it's just a very busy week again, but I want to get a podcast out there. So I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just jump on, do it straight from the phone. So right now I'm recording on a phone. Um, I have my microphone in, and I'm coming to you right now. But luckily, if you're listening, this isn't, um, this isn't the going to happen a lot because this next episode next week we will have a guest coming on so we have it's already lined up it's being recorded um probably by the time you hear this it'll be recorded maybe maybe not maybe in a couple of days when you hear this it'll be recorded but there's a new episode coming very soon so it's very exciting um so i decided that a while ago that i wanted to do a baseball podcast and i for people that don't know i'm a huge baseball guy i am a uh I played for a long time. I still play today. Um, I love the sport. I follow it religiously. I mean, uh, this weekend I was I was freelancing at a baseball game while watching a baseball game. Like I, I was freelancing doing video for baseball while watching the Yankees. So like, I very it's it's high up in my life baseball. So I wanted to do a baseball podcast because I feel I I'm, I'm very knowledgeable of it. Coached it. Pay attention to it for most of my life. I would say more than half of my life. I paid attention to Major League Baseball. So I wanted to do a podcast, but then things got busy. I mean, look at right now, right? Like I'm not even at my desk. I'm uh, I'm kind of here and there. with. I mean, episodes have been coming out consistently, but like a couple of them have been recorded like the morning of, <laughs> of the podcast and stuff like that just because it's been hard to get on, on microphone with all the freelancing and all of the uh, all all of the other work I'm doing and the traveling I'm doing for work and stuff like that. It's been a lot. It's been huff, it's been tough to get on the the podcast to get on the um, to get on the microphone. So I was like, yeah, I can't do a baseball podcast because it's hard to even commit to the podcast I'm on right now. So I decided not to do it. Now baseball season came around and I have my opinions and I have my my uh, <laughs> my thoughts I want to get out there. And I'm like, man, I really want to do a baseball podcast. Like I, I really just want to do this baseball podcast. So instead of doing the baseball podcast, I have changed it up. Mad Props will be doing baseball episodes. Um, if you don't like it, you can always go to the next episode or listen to old ones. But if you want to hear baseball, we're going to do baseball podcasts. It'll be in the title, as this one was, um, and it'll be labeled as such. So um, if, if it'll be coming out in the Mad Props feed on all social medias, um, it'll have its own logo. It'll have its own, um, its own, its own everything, its own name. I haven't come up with the name yet. This is kind of like the demo of it, but, uh, it'll have all its own stuff and it'll be, it'll be a baseball podcast. Now, how often it comes out will be, um, TBD. I think it right now it might come out once a month on the Mad Props feed, and then if it's successful or if I have more time to record it, which is more the second than the first, honestly, um, <laughs> I will start putting it still probably on the Mad Props feed, but it'll have its own day and there will be two podcasts instead of one. But that, that's a while down the road to see if it can even happen. So don't get all excited just yet because I don't even know if that's going to happen yet. But for right now, we're, we're going to do it this way. So there's not a title for this yet. I have some names in mind. I'm not going to say any of them because I want it to be like a, a fun shock. But I do have some fun names in mind that I think I'm going to call this. When you see it, it'll say um, the title of the episode 
and then have a slash. Just like if you've been on the YouTube, there's a slash on the Schnabel Studios YouTube page. There's a slash, and then it says Mad Props or Sketching Up. This one will say slash whatever the podcast name is. So on the Schnabel Studios feed, it will continue as its own thing, but it'll be on the Mad Props feed because we want to continue doing Mad Props. And I think this is the best way to do it. And it also integrates the thing I want to do the most. So after all that explanation, five minutes of explanation done, um, let's get into the first ever episode of the baseball podcast. I don't know what it's going to be called yet. It will not be like High School Musical, not be the baseball podcast, um, although that's not a bad name. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but we're, this is the demo of it. And I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to bring my baseball knowledge out there. So um, let's get started. Let's get going. It's time for the baseball podcast uh, TBD name here on the Mad Props feed. Thank you for joining us. Here we go. I don't think this will have the full scale of what the episodes will be. Um, this will be more of me kind of explaining what the format will look like. It may change up a little bit, but that's kind of what I have the format looking at right, right now. Then we'll go over some topics that I want to talk about, and then we will go from there, and hopefully it's successful and we did a good job. So I'm thinking in this uh, baseball podcast, it'll be broken into four different sections. It'll be me giving some sort of list, whether it's my top five players of the week, uh, top five players to look out for, top five fa fancy performers, top five guys with the f first name starts with a J. I don't even know. but It'll be some sort of list to start the thing, an explanation of why this list is a thing. It could be fun. It could be regular. We'll have to see, wait and see what each week holds. You know, if you're doing, um, if you start doing weekly, you kind of just have to reach down and find anything you can. So... That'll be the first one, and I'll try to give a list on this one today. Um, it'll be a very basic one. It will not be a fun one, unfortunately. Then we'll do my favorite headlines. Um, this is not necessarily going to be like, oh, the Rangers swept the Astros. Like It'll be my favorite headlines from whatever happened. It may even be stuff we don't even know. Uh, you may not even know. So that'll be the next thing. Uh, my predictions for that week, month, whatever this episode will be. Right now it's for the month. Um, it might not just be, it might not be like, oh, I think this team's going to go this and this. It could be like, I think XYZ is going to break out, or I think this dude's going to fall into a slump. Um, that'll be the prediction section. And then I think we're going to either end it with, um, there's a couple different ways we might end it. Um, one is we might have a short guest appearance on some episodes. I'm not promising all episodes because who knows, you know, how often we're, we're already trying to get guests for Mad Props. So I can't promise that, but it might be guest appearances, um, other appearances of friends or something like that that want to come on and give their opinions and I can get back and forth with them. Or uh, a really fun one, uh, we may do a recap of the games that I play. I play currently right now for a team in Texas um, in the Texas Amateur League. And so we might recap my own games. And I think that's how we're going to start this week because I did have a game recently and nobody knows about it because we just started. So... <laughs> So let's start with um, me giving my list. It's going to be a super basic list because, like I said, that's just how it has to start. So uh, you will see me looking off camera a lot because I'm on my phone, so I need to go and pull up all my notes and stuff like that. So I apologize for that. Um, but I think the first list we'll start with is the teams. It's, so this is going to be my five power ranking. Um, not necessarily the best teams in the league, not necessarily the best teams in the – in, in, in baseball, but who I think are the top teams in baseball. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start at number five. So my method is not the same as most websites you're going to read. I'm just going to go with like the hottest teams, the teams I think have been playing the best, not necessarily the teams I think are going to win the world series this year. These are the best teams. These are the teams you don't want to face right now. So number five, we're going to go with the Kansas City Royals. So the Kansas City Royals are sneaky having an amazing start to the season. As of recording, they are 10-6. and six. 
uh, plus 37 in the run differential, which run differential sometimes means a lot. It usually means a lot. We've obviously seen in the past, like with the with the Diamondbacks last year, doesn't mean as much as you'd like to think it does, but it does, I think, mean a lot uh, more than more than uh, more more than not. It means a lot more than not. They're 10 and six. They're eight and two in the last uh, in the last 10. They're having an unbelievable start to the season. Um, and I think they should be on the top five because I wouldn't want to face them right now. They're young, they're spry, they got some good players, and they're led by Bobby Witt, and he's you know a really young, good player. So that's my number five. And we're going to stay right in the uh, central for number four, and that's going to be the Cleveland Guardians, who are 10-5, 7-3 and in their last 10, and they have a plus 29 run differential right now. Um, They've been, again, not the best team. Their offense is very weak after their fourth hitter, um, who is, I think, Josh Naylor's their four. I think Ramirez is three, and Josh Naylor's their four. They have some good guys at the end of the lineup. I mean, as a Yankees fan, their eight hitter is Esteban Floreal. So I know they're struggling for offense. If that's your designated hitter, not even an outfielder, he's a designated hitter for them. So I, um, I would put them at number four. They're still do, doing well. They have a very good pitching staff, obviously a really good bullpen, having probably the best closer in baseball in Class A. But I would not want to face them right now because, you know, they're not even at their full strength and they are winning games. So obviously being in the AL Central makes it a little easier because the uh, Centrals are very weak, but I think they are a team I wouldn't want to face. So that's my number four. That is my number four. My number three is the, and this is going to be funny because I'm telling you right now, the Braves aren't on this list because they're like eight and eight. The Mets just destroyed them. So when you don't hear the Braves, don't be surprised. My number three is the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. They are 10 and four on the season plus 31 differential. They've been struggling a little bit of late but they have looked really good. The Milwaukee Brewers are the great American, the great regular season team. They are so good in the regular season. They struggle mightily, mightily after that. They obviously have only been to a couple NLCSs. The last one I can even remember was when like Ryan Braun was on the team, um, which he retired in 2020. So it's been a while. I think it was when he was in his when his, when he was in his peak as well, Ryan Braun. Um, so they're always good in the regular season though. They're always somewhere near the top and, uh, let me turn that sound off. They're always somewhere near the top and, um, they're having another good start to their season. They have a very good pitching staff, good young players. Um, Cherios, did I say that right? Jackson Cherios, um, is having a decent start. I don't think he's having a killer start, but you know, he's a 20 year old center fielder and he's going to be leading this team. So good team. Hopefully that insight wasn't too stupid. My number two team is the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the Dodgers. They are obviously going to be one of the best teams in baseball because they buy everything they possibly can. And if you want to be like, oh, they have their own homegrown players, you bought Freddie Freeman, you bought Mookie Betts, you bought Yamamoto, you bought Shohei Otani, uh, Teoscar Hernandez. I mean, you can go around that team, and there are so many p- players that would be legitimate top line starters on any other team and they're with the they're with the Dodgers so the Dodgers definitely deserve to be number two because they're really good only only a plus 12 run differential 11 and 7 on the year not having the hottest of hot starts but they are they're gonna be a hundred 105 win team by the end of this year so I'm not too worried about it I know I said it's right now but I still wouldn't want to face the Dodgers right now oh and by the way Tyler Glass now has looked unbelievable so far this year, which I predicted in my fantasy baseball league. I wanted him so badly, and I, I didn't care. It's like, I don't want to go over the whole rules. Maybe that's something else we could do at some point because I love this fantasy baseball league. Um, but it, I'm not going to go over all the rules, but essentially it's the contracts, and I don't remember how much his contract was. I think it was cheap, and that's why the guy didn't want to trade him. But I didn't care how much he was. I wanted him because I knew he was going to be like a legit, legit player. So my number one team, and it's not my New York bias that is doing this, the New York Yankees. I think that the Yankees have been the best team in baseball by far. 
I will say they've lost a couple of bad ones. They had a bad beat on Sunday. Um, you know, came back, tied the game, took a two-run lead, and then couldn't hold it. Um, I will not sit here and praise the Yankees right now because a lot of people know why the Yankees are doing really well. They have Aaron Judge. They have Juan Soto. Uh, Cabrera has been unbelievable. Like, he, he doesn't even hit in the beginning of the game, but at the end of the game, he's extremely clutch. Uh, Torres is looking pretty decent. Volpe has been unbelievable. Like, like, complete difference from last year. The guy could barely hit the ball last year, and now he's someone you don't want to see. He got moved all the way up from, like, the 8 to the 1 because he's just been hitting the ball so well, and he has that speed. So I, I, we don't need to talk about all that. The thing that worries me about the Yankees is their bullpen, which is crazy to think about because they've had such a good bullpen for so long. But the bullpen is just not the same anymore. Um, I don't look at anyone in that bullpen with, like, major confidence. Even Clay Holmes, who's good like 95% of the time, still has that massive 5%. It's almost like when Chapman came into the games. 95-plus um, percent of the time, Chapman was going to get the save. But there was always those times where he'd erupt or he'd walk the first four batters. Clay Holmes kind of has the same feel to him. So that worries me. Uh, Ian Hamilton's pretty good, but he's been shaky. The rest of the, I mean, Loisaga's out for the year, which is huge. Although Loisaga had some control issues before that even happened. And then you have all these other guys out of the bullpen that just like, I don't trust. Uh, Luke Weaver has been pretty good, but I mean, he hasn't been sensational or anything like that. So it's very worrisome to think about how the bullpen's, the bullpen's doing. Because if you, if you think about it as a Yankee fan, they like to be right. The Yankees like to be right, and they don't want to go out and be like, oh, well, we have to spend on a bullpen because we, you know, we've had Ian Hamilton, we've had Clay Holmes, we've had, and they named this guy after this guy. There were nobodies that became big names, but this year it's not working. So are you going to try to do the same thing, or are you going to actually go out and get somebody that can make a difference? Somebody that's a good setup guy, somebody that's a good middle reliever. doesn't have to be the all, you know, it doesn't have to be an all-star closer, but somebody that can gap those bridges because the bullpen's been very tough. It's been very hard for the bullpen. So that is my top five teams I would not want to face right now if I was a Major League Baseball club. The Royals, the Guardians, the Brewers, the Dodgers, and the Yankees. That's a subject to change, and that is right now, currently, at this day and time, that I wouldn't want to face them. So there you go. Top five teams. All right, so we're going to come right back. We're going to do the uh, my, my favorite headline. And my favorite headline... Um, it's not a baseball, Major League Baseball headline. It's actually something that I recently did that I'm very excited to share. So uh, we'll be right back and we'll do, the, we'll do my favorite headline. Let's do it. Okay, so I don't really have uh, favorite headlines this time around just because I um, wanted to say one story. So I have recently been uh, freelancing with the Frisco Rough Riders, which is a funny... Thing. Let's start with that. So I've been, fr I've been freelancing with the Frisco Rough Riders, just doing video work and stuff like that, which is a really uh, funny full, t full circle story. Um, so I think it was like 10 or 11 years ago, I started in my friend Dave Puglisi's Dynasty Baseball League, and part of his rule set was you have to be an actual team, whether it's a fictional actual team, like from like, you know, Batman or something, or like a minor league baseball team. So I picked the Frisco Rough Riders as my team in my fantasy league because I loved how they had Teddy Roosevelt as their their uh, logo. Uh, the first logo is him, just a picture of his head. The second logo is a um, him swinging a bat, which is my favorite one. That's what ours is on my fantasy league. And they had a bunch of different ones, and I really liked it. Here we are like 10 years later and I'm now working with them as a freelancer uh, and I'm, I'm working with the Frisco Rough Riders while owning a fantasy baseball team of the Frisco Rough Riders, which uh, is just, it's really funny to, it's really funny to have all that. So that's just the quick story. So the other two stories I have, um, first of all, so I, I have this fantasy team, um, Nate Lowe, I think it's Nathaniel Lowe, is on my fantasy team. And long behold, the three games I just worked, Nathaniel Lowe is playing for the Frisco Rough Riders. 
So for the first time, um, maybe ever, I don't know if he played for them in the minors before, for the first time maybe ever, Nate Lowe was on the Frisco Rough Riders two times. Because he's on my fancy Frisco Rough Riders, and he's on the ma- or the minor league Frisco Rough Riders. But anyway, he did play. He had a home run in the third game. It was pretty dope to see. Um, one, it's really funny. Like, so the, if you're a if you're a major league player rehabbing in the minors, you have to wear your major league pants and you wear your major league uh, helmet. Like, so he was wearing a Rangers helmet when everybody else had a Frisco Rough Riders helmet. Now, I believe that's because the minor league helmets are double eared. Maybe I don't know. I actually don't. I'd have to look. I don't remember if they were double eared or not. But anyway, it's probably a different helmet, different material, different things, all that stuff. Or you have to buy new equipment every time a new player comes in. Whatever it is, um, it's probably just not worth the hassle, and they just do that. It's also, But it's pretty cool Like if you're like, hey, I want to go to the first Rough Riders game tonight. And you go, and then you see the Texas Rangers helmet on somebody. You're like, oh, that's a major league player that's rehabbing. That's so cool. So I thought that was pretty dope. So that's that's a fun thing to know when you go to minor league baseball is if they're hitting and they have a major league hat on, uh, that means they are for the major league team rehabbing, and it kind of just calls them out, which I think is pretty cool. I think that's a pretty cool thing they do. I don't think they do it for it to be cool. I think they do it because, like, you'd have to re-get the helmet and the guy's size, and then, like, after he's gone, what do you do with it? Because he probably won't be back and all this other stuff. That's probably what it's about, but... I thought it was really cool. So Nate Lowe was there. The real story of the weekend was Saturday. Uh, I was working the field camera, and Justin Verlander, three-time Cy Young Award winner, one-time MVP, World Series champion, Justin Verlander, was making a rehab start for the Corpus Christi Hooks, uh, which is the minor league affiliate for the Houston Astros coming off his injury. And I got to be right up close and personal with Mr. Verlander as I was right on the field cam. And I have to say, it was one of the cooler things I think I've done, especially in recent history. I mean, this is, I've, I've worked with Gonzaga. I was taking video of Chet Holmgren, like four inches away from him, like in, in Jalen Suggs and Corey Kisper. And I've worked for the Boston Red Sox. I helped the Red Sox player carry a chair to his car in my life. And I still think this was the coolest thing because not only did I get to see one of the best pitchers of our generation pitching um, right up close and personal and got paid to do it, by the way, I also got to further myself by getting video of Justin Verlander doing this. So it overall was a really good and really cool experience, and I'm glad that I was able to go and do it um, in that freelancing in that freelancing bid. But he went in, he got rocked. He gave up like six runs and three innings. I don't remember if it was four and but six overall or something like that. Gave up a lot of runs, though, so he kind of got rocked. Um, but I got some good shots. There's one on the Schnabel Studios page right now that you can go see. There will be more coming soon. I have to go get it off of the, um, the, the equipment at the Rough Riders, which I'm going to go do this week. But there will be more stuff coming of Justin Verlander and Nate Lowe and uh, all the Rough Rider stuff. All the cool videos we got are going to be on the Schnabel Studios page. But I just thought it was cool that I got the video of Justin Verlander in a minor league uniform. And that was my top headline of the week um, because that was my top headline. It's Justin freaking Verlander. It's, it's one of the best pitchers of our generation. It's an MVP and a three-time Cy Young guy. I mean, it was really cool to do. And uh, I don't know... If you're, if you're wondering, is he a good guy, bad guy, I didn't get to talk to him. I had no opportunities to interact with him. I did get some of him um, in the dugout. I saw him in the dugout. I was right next to the away dugout, so I got to see him in there. He didn't really talk to anybody on the other team until he got pulled out of the game, which makes sense, right? He's a major league pitcher. That's probably part of his thing. He didn't talk to anybody. He wants to get pulled out of the game. He was talking with a lot of players and stuff like that. Um, as he left, he left after his start. He did not stay around and sit in the dugout. He left like an inning later um, as he walked up the, fir- the first baseline, taking pictures of kids and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I don't think he was like a I – th- I think he-, he was pretty cool and stuff like that. I don't know. Didn't get to interact with him. But he did sign autographs and stuff. So that's pretty awesome, right? Like you're, you're the top, top guy in, in the league, and you're going and you're taking pictures and signing autographs and – you know, still giving back to the fans, even though you really don't have to. You could just go do your start and leave. So I'll give him credit for that. Anyway, that's my top headline. 
Got to meet Justin Verlander, or no, got to meet, got this video Justin Verlander. Go check it out in Schnabel Studios if you want to see more of it. There's going to be more stuff coming out as well. So that's the big one for me. Um, the last thing I really have, I, I have the predictions. Um, I don't have predictions, I mean, this week. Um, I, I really want to, that's going to be like a big segment, and I just don't have it this week. So no predictions. The Yankees are going to win the World Series. That's my prediction. <laughs> it's my prediction every year. Um, so we can finish it with my, my recap of my game. So I played my first game in the North Texas Amateur Baseball League um, with the Dallas Orioles. Uh, I think it was two weeks ago now because we've had a couple of rainouts and stuff like that. Texas has had some bad weather recently. So I played my first game. Um, of course, my first at bat struck out. I struck out on a bad Third strike, curveball, broke out of the zone, umpire, called it a strike three, whatever. Um, but I was very jittery. I was very anxious to get up there. It's been a while since I really played, um, so I was very worried. Or very nervous, nervous, not worried, I was nervous. So I came in there, and I, I, played, uh, I, played, I played pretty well for that, you know, for that nervousness and butterflies so struck out my first at bat second at bat I actually got a walk and scored from first now the reason that's a big deal is for people that don't maybe know I used to be very heavy I was about 450 ish pounds maybe a little under that uh, my whole life I was very heavy and I was very slow so a base hit split the outfield scored from first was a big deal for me because that probably doesn't happen even a couple of years ago um, just because I was so heavy and so slow so i got the score from first which is really cool i played third base um <laughs> i did make a pretty bad throwing error in the second inning made a really good backhanded play down the line thought i was manny machado for a second obviously i am not manny machado um haven't I, honestly i haven't even played third in a while because i used to play everywhere when i played in new york and i played third in new york and i played third in boston actually and then i um just <laughs> I haven't played in a while at all so I haven't played there in a while but I made the backhand tried to machado it threw it wild and uh it, it didn't go good but other than that I did pretty well at third um didn't make any other errors didn't make any other bad mistakes um made a couple plays after that and it felt really good to be back out there so we won our game we're one and oh um I am 0 for 1 on the se season. Maybe I'll put that somewhere, my my statistical uh, season <laughs> that's going on. But I'm 0, 0, 0 for 1 on the season with a walk, a run scored, and a strikeout, and a put out and an error. So that's all of it put together. I do actually have that in my notes, my, my statistical season, so I can keep it updated throughout the season without losing track of it because I just like knowing for myself. I like knowing how I'm doing I like knowing how the season's going. I like knowing my own stats. And I like knowing what, what I'm doing here and there. Actually, my swing was really off. I noticed it on the strikeout. Like, I swung at a, a pitch, and on the walk, I even fouled one off. And I was like, oh, this doesn't feel right. Like, I hit it on the inside of the hands. Um, so I went to the cages, and I was really working on my swing. And I went slow motion, and I was like, oh, my gosh. My swing, it was like almost like a golf swing. It was very long, very, um, very circular. Um hands weren't going to the ball hands are dragging to the ball and all this stuff so i ended up switching everything up and um, i can't wait for my next game on thursday where i can really put it all together and hopefully do better so that's the first game recap that's the i did a list i did predictions i did all that stuff hopefully we'll do more i i assume the next baseball podcast will be pretty soon it won't be like a full month uh, it'll be really detailed out, and I can't wait to do it. Have better background for people watching. <laughs> There's not a good background on this one. But I hope it went pretty well. I know I didn't go too much into detail on a lot of things. Um, I just kind of wanted this to be a pilot episode to get it out there, to get the idea out there, because I've had this idea for a long time, and I think this was the best way to do it. If you don't already, follow Mad Props on social media, at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and x slash Twitter. Um, we are, you know, updating every day. We're, we're sharing a lot of our former guest stuff. So if you want to keep up with guests, that's the best place to do it. Make sure you follow Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, TikTok. We are posting a lot on all of those, even TikTok. We are posting a lot on TikTok. So definitely go out there, check that out. 
Um, we really appreciate your feedback. We really appreciate you guys going out there and looking, and we appreciate your support. We've been getting some good support on a lot of videos and stuff like that, and I appreciate every person that watches, listens, likes, and everything like that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, um, whether you're listening or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. The more, the more we can have of you guys following this stuff, listening to this stuff, the more we can actually do with it where I don't have to be sitting at my work desk with my awful background. I can make sure I always have a good background as long as, you know, there are people there listening. If there aren't people there listening, it's tough to be able to do that. Um, make sure you comment. Let us know what you thought of the podcast. Let us know your opinion. If you disagree, you don't think the Brewers should be in the top five, let me know. I don't care. I love to argue that. Um, but definitely do that and look out for a social media page starting for our baseball. You know, we're going to start posting and we're going to do a little bit on, on mad props right now, but you know, maybe we'll have our own baseball page coming soon. So definitely keep on the lookout for that. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate you joining. I know it was a little bit of an abbreviated episode, but at least we got one out there. We appreciate you so much for next, next week. We will have a guest. We will have a guest next week. So definitely stick around for that. On this feed, we'll see you later. This has been Matt Prop slash the new, newly, hopefully, has a name soon baseball show. All right, see you later. Go Yankees.